Hello everyone and peace of Christ to all of you. Today our topic is very important and we will make a series of it. And you will notice right away that our chat is not activated uh, because I noticed there's many people they are just coming to chit chat and you know not uh, just to waste our time and not really to be uh, uh, you know uh, joining for the purpose of learning or education. And many even they use bad language and they insult each other. So we will keep it for, for such a way for some time until maybe we have enough admins to maintain the text. Uh, today, our topic is about the purpose of the Quran. There's tons of articles speaking about the purpose of the Quran. Or let us say, you know, at the end of the day, uh, uh, the purpose of the Quran is the purpose of Islam, right? And the Muslims, they have articles to help us, and we are thankful for their articles. Uh, uh, to, to tell us what is the purpose of Islam or what is the purpose of the Quran and here in front of me this is one of those articles I will share it with you uh, give me a second uh, Mr. Uh, Sohib Sultan I just searched on the internet I mean I don't know who is this person five purpose of the Quran by Mr. Sohib Sultan Quran for dummies uh, uh, cheat uh, cheat cheat okay uh, as holy uh, book of Islam, the Quran informs millions of Muslims around the world. The book itself serves five essential purpose. Okay, let us see what they are. The guidance. Okay, what, what kind of guidance? The Quran serves as guide to believe in the oneness of God and to lead the ethical life, defend as submission or surrender to the will of Allah, the God of Islam. Uh, this is complete way of life and offer guidance. You know, when, when Muslims, they say complete way of life, uh, as an example, okay, uh, if I ask the Muslim, where we can find in the Quran the punishment of uh, rape? You see, when you say complete guide of life, it's mean nothing, nothing there is missing. Whatever I need, it's there in the book. But not a single verse in the Quran is speaking about very important, ugly crime a human being he do. He does before, he does now, he will do tomorrow. Rape. There is no punishment for rape. This is a very little simple, which is a huge. Because if your God, he made a book, and this book supposedly is perfect, and yet there is nothing about rape and, you know, abusing women in such a way. It's a crime, ugly crime, or even raping children. Actually, the Quran is an empty book. So I'm really surprised when Muslims, they say to us what they say in their article, a full way of life. And then they say to you, oh, we can find you things from the Hadith. Well, find me something from the Hadith about rape. I will be happy to hear it. But if you find something ever, that's mean the Quran is not the book of guide of life. It's mean the Quran cannot stand by itself. It's mean Allah did not really teach Muhammad anything and Muhammad he have to complete what Allah he did not or he did miss. So the Quran is a big failure in every way and every mean. The Muslim today they practice a punishment is called a stone into death but we cannot find that in the Quran. So they are basing their religion in a man saying not God saying. They claim that the Quran is God saying and Muhammad saying is a man saying but yet we find that they follow what Muhammad say over what Allah say. The Quran says you do muta, which is very unethical, where you can rent a woman for one night stand and you pay her for taking off her clothes or even for one hour. And then they say, you know, there's a hadith says that the prophet abrogate those verses. How can God be abrogated by a man? If God, he gave the order, how a man can fix God order? Isn't it? This is the God you are saying that the Quran, as you see in the article, the Quran, the purpose of the Quran. So you should not say we live by the purpose of the Quran. We should say we live by the purpose of the Hadith, which is Muhammad's statement, not Allah's statement. Because in order for a prophet to abrogate the word of God, he should receive word from God to abrogate the word of God. Higher authority. You don't abrogate the higher authority by a lower authority. That is a funny thing and funny ideology. And if you say to me that Muhammad, he got the authority from God to do that, show me. Show me where Allah said to him, Muhammad, abrogate this verse. Because how Muhammad, he knew he should abrogate that verse. He should receive an inspiration from Allah, and that will be Quran. And as we know, Muhammad, he never received any inspiration from Allah. But what we know, there's a guy, his name is Jibreel. He come to Muhammad as a man, and he delivers to him messages. 
However, today our topic is really not exactly this, but this is a presentation to the failure of everything in this cult. Now, uh, the Quran distinguished between moral and immoral. And today we will talk about that in a very simple method. And we will start talking about the family. Is it moral for a man to have many wives? A Muslim will say to you, do you know how many David in the Bible have, you know, who said that David was doing a moral work? <laughs> this is not moral. <laughs> Actually, David is very, everybody knows he, you know, he, he was a, obviously he was a, like a, a, a womanizer man. He was a sinner man. He was a bad person. And the Bible condemn him for that. So, when we say morality, what is morality? Having more than one woman, two women, three women, four women, is that my morality? Or having children as a spouse. The Prophet of Islam, as an example, he did marry Aisha at the age of six years old. How that can be morality? Where is the moral of a man who is at the age of 54, yet he want to have a little child in his bed? I don't see morality in this morality. Is that moral? A man should think about a female that's normal. God, he made us male and female. And, you know, male, he like female for a reason, for she is a female, obviously. We do not need to explain. But where is the female in six years old baby? How he even saw, it as a, saw her as a female? She is just a child. So the moral, you know, of what, what, what they bring to us is a crime. If Muhammad arrived to any airport today and he have a wife with him, she is six years old, he would be arrested immediately. And his name will be in every newspaper. 54 years old, six years old, baby child. Honeymoon trip to England. Arrested in the airport. Why do we arrest him? Because this is immoral. Because this is unethical. Not because it's the opposite. And then they will say to you, well, at that time, it was fine. Well, is at that time, it was fine to commit a crime against a child. And where is your God? I thought your God, he guide you. Child is a child. Aisha, according to the Hadith, which is written by the Muslims and Aisha herself, reported that until the age of 14, she don't have her period. And she was playing with dolls. When Muhammad, he entered upon her net, he found her, uh, you know, when she was almost 14 at that time, uh, playing with dolls. And those dolls, she called them in Arabic, Banati, which means my daughters. My daughters. In the translation, we find that those uh, translation is gone. They say the word doll only. So they, they took the word Banati because it's very embarrassing that uh, uh, supposedly the wife of the prophet calling her dolls my daughters how that can be then we go to the Quran forget about Muhammad now what about the Quran did the Quran gave us any guideline to be moral people to be good people chapter 4 verse number 3 it says if you feel that you cannot deal fairly with the orphan girls, okay, hold on. What, okay, sound good. Like, I mean, if you cannot deal, why orphan girls specifically? What, what about girls? The Quran encouraging us to marry orphan children. Because, is, as you see, it says girls. This is a Muslim translation, by the way, not mine. So don't blame me for a translation. Don't say, oh, this is a... You know, this is your Muslim translation. I have nothing to do with it. This is your Islamic website. Very well known. I have nothing to do. I'm just reading for you what is in the screen. Okay. So if you cannot if you cannot be fairly dealing with the orphan girls, okay, how fairly? 
uh, marrying children again and our an orphan so I cannot be good to the orphan unless I sleep with the orphan is that what is is that what ethic today is in order to be good to the orphan I have to sleep with the orphan so if the orphan did not go to my bed I will not give him a sandwich or her now you marry you may marry of women of your choice two or three or four the Quran never start with one the option have to be from the multi wives and then but if you fear that you might and be not to be able to treat them equally then only one any Muhammadan is watching this he will say to you well don't you see he is saying if you fear not to treat them equally okay so let us take this as, as an ethical standard that if I can treat women equally then I can marry women of my choice two and three and four whatever but is it possible to treat women equally any Muslim who have no idea what we are talking about he will say yes well guess what the same chapter say no the same chapter say no it is mission impossible so why you marry them you see I just open another page so I can show you right away chapter 4 verse number 3 says go and do by the way it doesn't say Mary this is a translation of the Muslims the word here even did not use the word Mary it says which means do the, 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 the you know the effort physical action so do the F thing to two and the three and four and if you cannot be fairly uh, then for wahida which mean only one but in verse number four verse 129 it says you cannot be and you will never be able to treat your wife equally okay hold on what kind of God this God is in one verse he says that you can have multi wives if you treat them equally okay is that a statement with the with, with the stop sign saying which means don't do it like don't multiply your wife no the Muslim they practice that Muhammad he have many wives he have 13 according to Muslims and hundreds of or thousands of sex slaves so how you say to me in one verse you can have sex with two and three and four but if you cannot be able to be treated equally then only one in the same Quran you say to me in the same chapter verse 129 and you will never be able to treat them in equal fairness never if Allah say never that's me never correct guys Muslims you know don't tell me Allah he is saying maybe some of you can do it some of you cannot he says you will never he's speaking to all the Muslims but look what happened Muhammad because he's a hypocrite man if you read the verse before it Muhammad he says <laughs> if a woman she fear ill treatment from an, an, uh, from her husband they can come to an agreement this is what I was about a Sauda a wife her name is Sauda she became old and not good-looking for Muhammad sorry to say the word but this is how it is described in this in the, in the in the Sahih al-Bukhari in the Sahih Muslim and all this, uh, uh, the Sunni Muslim hadith so Muhammad he wanted to divorce this woman because he don't like her he don't sleep with her she is old and he don't like old women obviously so Aisha she gave her an idea I will talk to the Prophet and you give me your day which mean the day of uh, of, of Sauda because the, the Prophet he used to divide his days between the wives but anyway he don't sleep with this woman so she said to her I will convince him you know he cannot resist my temptation I am the the young one and I can convince him to keep you without divorce but he will not come to you he will not see you he will not talk to you he will not sleep with you if you agree to give me your day the woman she said sure because the woman now she is fearing she would be homeless she is old nobody will marry her so for the sake of her security so just to eat bread and have a roof in the top of her head by being the wife of the prophet even though she is not literally or technically a wife no more 
she agreed so Muhammad as usual he make a verse says that if a woman fear her husband and the Arabic here it says wa in imra'a khafat min ba'liha nushudan the word nushuz here present what you see the same word in the Quran appear in the same chapter chapter 4 verse number 34 the same chapter says if a woman if a man he see from his wife Nishu's he can beat her the same book so if a man he do Nishu's to the women the women she cannot beat him she can have an agreement that the man he will not divorce her or has as he wish which means he keep her like a <laughs> like a like you know like a, a piece of furniture in the house I will not touch you just sit there hmm? Maybe you, you wash the dishes. Hmm? You make hummus for us. I will go to the bedroom with Aisha and you make hummus for us. So when we finish our business, we eat hummus. So if a woman should practice no shoes, and this is what the translation here coming up with, ill treatment, the man, he can beat his wife. The man, he can beat his wife. Okay, in which ethical religion, in which ethical teaching, a man, he can beat his wife? What is the ethic of me beating my wife? And what that will fix? And why if the man, he do himself, the new shoes, the woman, she cannot beat him? But if the man notice the shoes, the same word exactly. You know, let me let me show you. Here we go. I will go back. Chapter four, verse number thirty-four. The same chapter, the same page. You know, the same exact word. All right. Men are in charge of women. But let me show you the word first in Arabic. Here, the, here we go. The word nushuz. You see it? Nushuz. Exactly the same word. What nushuz mean? If you fear that your women, they have nushuz, beat them. Stop sleeping with them. Admonish them. And scourge them. So how come the man... He do no shoes, the man, the woman, she cannot beat the husband. But if the women do no shoes, the man, he can beat the wife. So this is the ethic of Islam, and this is how we can establish a good family. And here, some Muslim, they will say to you, the word no shoes mean uh, uh, adultery. Uh, I just showed you the verse bef before uh, uh, this one. Uh, this is about your prophet himself committing no shoes. And what new shoes? He don't like his wife no more. As simple as that. So if a woman she have new shoes, maybe she just like uh, to uh, uh, to sleep with him, or maybe she just like to, uh, you know, sit with him, or whatever thing. Beat them. So this is the wisdom and the wise Quran. The Quran says if a man he do new shoes. The man, he can do whatever he wish. The women, she have to be subdued. And the man, he can come to an agreement. Okay, I will keep you in my house, but you do this and this and this. But if the women, she do the same act with his new shoes, which is ill treatment, as the translation come with in English, the man, he can beat his wife. So where is the ethical? And here we need to ask a question more than just an ethical. You see... Sometimes we do things maybe it's not ethical to fix a problem. Uh, I'm trying just to be practical. Forget about God, being a Christian, being Muslim, being Hindu, being let us I would I want to be an atheist for, for five minutes. So let us say the ethic thing is not in my book. And I want to fix a problem. How in the world I'm going to fix a problem by beating my wife? Is that going to make my life better? Is that going to make my life happy? Is that going to make my life and my, my, my children respect me? Or they will hate me? 
when a child he see his his dad beating his mother he, trust me he will hate you maybe by time he forgive you but still you are an ugly person in his eye so this is a big failure what kind of an ethic and what kind of religion is saying to me well beat your wife in order to make her obey you you see the purpose is not <laughs> is not even anything except making her obey me read carefully admonish them and banish them in the bed of uh, part and I'm reading exactly the Muslim translation I'm not adding a word and discourage them then if they obey you seek not a way against them so what is the purpose of the beating making my wife obey me so in Islam the ethic of Islam is teaching us that beating women is ethical humiliating women is ethical forcing women against their will is ethical and that mean I can beat the, my wife if you know if I can beat my wife for not making coffee for me that mean I can beat my wife if she don't want to take off her panty for me and then rape her because this would be a rape this is why you will see nothing in Islam is called raping a woman she is married by the husband such a crime does not exist because it is his right and Muhammad he you know he taught us more ethic about this issue where he said that either you know if a, if a man he asked his wife to come to bed let us see the hadith and she did not come the angel the angels of Allah will curse her all night look at this hadith in front of us look at the ethic the messenger of Allah said when a man call his wife to satisfy his desire she must go to him even if she was occupied with the oven you know that in old days they make that the uh, tanur is like a, is an old style of uh, using uh, the dunk of animals to make uh, bread this is the duty of the women but remember here the man the Muslim man he had many wives so if one of them she is busy doing the ho the house what kind of marriage this marriage is what this woman she is she is required to do so she have to feed the man she have to cook for the man she have to clean dishes she have to clean clean the house she have to take care of the kids she have to give him babies and then any time he asks her to take off her clothes even if she is making a bread will be burned she have to leave and come immediately is that the ethic In the other hadith, Muhammad says, if a woman she did not go, uh, the man, the angels of Allah will curse her. And then when we speak about beating women, some Muslim they will say to you, well, do you know how, uh, how what, what kind of beating we are talking about? We are talking about beating by miswak. Let me find you the miswak in Google. So you will see exactly what we are talking about they try to convince you that the miswak is little tiny thing in the hand like a, a toothbrush the miswak is a very long root and the reason is used there because the same it is the same tool they use it to beat the camel with it this is the miswak after they cut it off into pieces you see it this is the miswak this is not the real miswak which mean I mean it is short they cut it off you can tell you know see the edge of the knife they cut it off or you know so this is not the whole link of it it's long but they say to you it's easy I mean it's a, it's not a big deal it's a miswak this is very harmful very long route 
is used to beat the women with it and as you see the Quran confirmed that the purpose of this beating is to force the women to obey you which means this beating have to be harmful to the point will make you change your mind choosing between pain and freedom of choice and here not only the purpose of the Quran proving a big failure the purpose of having a family proving the big failure because what kind of a family it says go and have four women where is the family in this four women especially those four women I can change them every day I can exchange every day unlimited number of women and I change it in Muslim to say it's not true because all what you need to do you are allowed to have four women in the same time four women in the same time so I can divorce every every minute four and get a new four the women in the same time the women they cannot go and get married after I divorce them they have to wait for three months so while the women she have to wait for three months after I divorce her the man he can get married immediately for another four women so if you are a rich man live in the Middle East you can marry a limited number of women as much as you wish legally officially and nobody will accuse you of anything four women every one second if you want if one second is enough for you divorce four get a new four divorce four get a new four and if any of those four disobey you you beat the hell of her and talking about beating kindly as Muslim they claim here we have an, a clear a clear evidence of the ethic of Muhammad when a woman she came to Muhammad wife Aisha and she complained about her husband beating her until he made her skin greener than her clothing and this is Sahih Bukhari very authentic story so the woman she was wearing a green veil and then she showed to Aisha a green spot in her skin caused by beating you can tell it's a very light beating as Muslim they say and it was the habit of ladies to support each other so here the, the hadith saying see those ladies just support each other even if they are wrong come on you know it's, look at the ethical look how they present the story for you so when Allah messenger came Aisha she told him the story and then you can read the story you will see the man not only he took the side of the man Muhammad he never asked the man why you did beat your wife actually there's a hadith that says a man should not be asked about why he beat his wife and not only Muhammad he took the side of the man which obviously the women she don't want to sleep with him which mean he is beating her to rape her not only Muhammad he took the side of the man but he gave him a verse says beat them and not only that he said to her if you want to go to your previous husband you should know you cannot go back to his to, to previous husband unless you taste his juice and he tastes your juice and the Muslim here translated as you cannot go back to Rifa you cannot go back to remarry Rifa Rifa is the previous husband unless Abdul Rahman had this is a translation sexual intercourse with you but the fact in Arabic it doesn't say that in Arabic it says you cannot go back to your your previous husband because obviously this woman she's trying to get back to her previous husband she don't like this husband you cannot get back unless what does that mean enter you uh, taste his sexual juice and you know what I'm talking about if we go to the dictionary, we will find it is orgasm. And he tastes your juice. This is the condition for a woman to go back to her husband. The new husband, and this is another morality failure in Islam. Where we can find this morality? In any which which religion in the world it says if a woman she divorce her husband and her husband divorce her three times, she cannot go back. 
to her previous husband. Unless she find a new husband and he do physical sexual intercourse. I'm trying to avoid using the F word because this is what it says in Arabic. Chapter 2, verse number 33. So chapter uh, 2, verse number 2, 3. If a husband, he divorced his wife three times, she is not lawful for him, which means to come back to him, until she go and do sexual intercourse with the new husband. Have you ever heard of a cult? Come with such an idea? The man, he divorced his wife. If Islam is against divorce, so why you make it so easy? Because all what the man he do, he said divorce, divorce, you are divorced, that's it. You do not even need to go to court. So why you made it so easy for them? And now the man, he divorced the women three times. So the women, she can't go back to her husband unless she find a new guy to sleep with her. And then he have to taste her juice. And she tastes his juice. How ugly, how disgusting this language even to say. I apologize for saying it, but this is for educational purpose. This is exactly what it says. If you ask a Muslim about this, and you know, I debated tens of thousands of Muslims, not a, not a hundred, not a thousand, not two thousands. They will say to you, well, uh, here to teach the husband to behave so he will not abuse divorce. <laughs> that is the most funny, stupid excuse ever. Because you want to teach the husband to behave by forcing the women to go to different husband? Who is the one will take off her clothes and sleep with a stranger now? It's the wife. It's not the guy. The guy is sitting home. He don't care. The woman, she want to go back because she have a children from this man. She's not because of the man. We know what women are about. Women, they sacrifice for their children. The, the women, she stay with the husband who is ugly, disgusting with the behavior just because of the babies. Not because of the man. So the women now, she want to go back to the husband who divorced her three times. Obviously, he don't care. He's playing games. And now she has to find a new husband. And now the new husband have to sleep with her. Not only she marry him just like by papers. No, she, he have, as Muhammad we showed you in the hadith. And not only that, her future now is in the hand of the new husband. And this is what happened with this guy. This woman, she did marry this guy, obviously, who is a very old, hoping he will not sleep with her. But this man want to sleep with her. And she is refusing to sleep with him, hoping that he will divorce her so she can go back to her previous husband. And even the husband, who is the present husband now, he said that to Muhammad. He says, you know what? She want to go back to her previous husband. The women accuse him that he is sexually unable. The man, he says, by Allah, I'm very strong. I can satisfy her. But disobedient, she don't. She want to go back to Rafa. Do you see it? So now, if the Quran is a book which is giving a pro, solving a problem, as as you see, the Quran is creating problems. The poor woman, she is desperately taking an action which is not right. She don't agree with to marry a new husband just to go back to the previous husband. Now, obviously, I don't think she is really in love with this Rafa. I think she want to go back to her babies. What is the ethic and what is the wisdom in this? And now the prophet, instead of taking, okay, says, look, listen, uh, I know you have babies from this man. You want to go back for your children. I mean, this is, isn't it merciful of Allah if he is God to say that the women, no problem. He agreed to take you back go back it's not your fault anyway it is the idiot who is abusing the marriage or the right of divorce no and instead of fixing the problem we make it way more complicated and far away from ethic who in the world would like really to see his daughter divorced by a guy 
and now she want to go back to the previous husband she had to find a new guy and she had to sleep with him for a couple of nights or one night at least so she can get back to the husband do you see how disgusting it is and not only that you see when the Quran is speak about being justice and obviously the Quran fail with every way what about Muhammad when the Quran says Mary two and the three or I see I'm saying the word Mary because supposedly it's about Mary right but it's not the word Arabic is, it doesn't say Mary Mary but let us go with the word Mary as the Muslims they use it claiming that this is marriage when the Quran says that the man he can have two and three and four and then you have to be treat them equally and then we find you in the same chapter all the way at the end it says and you will never be able to treat them equally but guess what Muhammad was a person who never treat his wife equally and just to show you how Muhammad and his ethic work this is how Muhammad this is the view of Islam of women the Prophet said the superiority of Aisha to other ladies is the like of the superiority of the thread the 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 the, the, the tharid, uh, in Arabic is like a, a dish is like rice you know it's like a rice so he favor rice over other food and this is how he compare women to women he had many wives and this is his favorite dish do you see the ethic I mean the ethic is dripping like rice Muhammad he could not find a way to describe his favorite wife except that she is a favorite dish how humiliating and how insulting and how unethical women in Islam is a dish you know, go to McDonald's grab one oh this McDonald is better than this McDonald what is your favorite dish my friend Abdullah which one of your wives is your favorite dish and while the Quran says you cannot be uh, justice and the Quran says you cannot marry unless they are your justice which is a contradiction because how we can practice both now the Quran says you will never be justice and the Quran says you can have two and three and four to have sex with them if you can be justice so how so how Muslim they practice how Muhammad he have all those women you will find the answer for that when you read the story of Muhammad while the wives of Muhammad they came to complain they sent even his daughter to Muhammad and they say read carefully this is Sahih al-Bukhari Sahih al-Nusai Sahih any all the Sahih books and this is Sahih hadith so the Muslim cannot say this one is Sunan al-Nusai this is Sahih we can show it from Muslim etc The wives of the Prophet they sent Zainab to Jahsh. This is another ethical problem in Islam. Muhammad he went, we will talk about it maybe later in a different video because this video will go forever. We're going to talk about the false ethic of Muhammad. So Zainab went to Jahsh was the wife of the adopted son of Muhammad, but because he became, as he claimed, in, in love with her, <laughs> in love with married women, she is married to his own son imagine and then he made a verse in the Quran saying Allah told him why you hide what Allah he told you about what is in your heart for this woman but the woman she is married and he went to her house and he said to her and this is all the stories we are reading for you is written in by Muslims hands and the Muslims they praise those stories about how amazing the Prophet is so he went to the wife of a married man who is his son by adoption and he stood in the middle of the room he says to her Subhanallah, praise be to Allah, the one who flipped my heart for you. How dare you? And then Allah, He made a verse for him saying, Take her. So now the wives they knew that this guy, he, this is his new favorite wife. Aisha was always the favorite wife, right? 
So now they thought maybe this wife will will make him they will persuade him to change the injustice because always he treat Aisha as we said she is his favorite dish. So they asked the new wife, who because obviously he is desperate to have sex with her, maybe she can convince him because this is the only competition we have now between uh, with Aisha. So they asked her to go and speak to Muhammad, and look what she asked him for. She was one was somehow somewhat equal to me in the rank Aisha saying that somehow she is equal to me in the rank Muhammad he have ranks for his wives Muhammad he have a drill sergeant if you serve in the USA army you will know what the drill sergeant Muhammad he have a captain wife Muhammad he have a general wife they have ranks Yet the Muslim, they say the Quran says you have to treat them equally, and then in the eyes of the Messenger of Allah. And I have never seen a woman who is better in religious. Uh, so even Aisha, she is saying she is a great woman. And then look what happened. The woman, she came to him and she asked Muhammad to treat uh, to treat the other wives. The same way you treat Aisha. Treat them equally. We are asking for justice. Read carefully. This is not my words. She said, she entered and she said, O oh, Messenger of Allah, your wife have sent me to ask you to be equitable with regard to the matter of the daughter of Abu Quhafa. This is another name for Abu Bakr, which is the father of Aisha. Then she says she verbally abused me. So Zainab, she insulted Aisha. At length, and I was watching the messenger of Allah to see if he would Allow me to respond. Look at this. Zainab went to Jahsh until I realized that the message of Allah would not disapprove it. Look at this. So Muhammad now enjoying two women fighting over him. And actually, they are not fighting over him, they are fighting over gifts. Muhammad is a is a gang member who all all the bribe they come to him when he is in the house of Aisha. Why? Because if Aisha she heard that somebody send a gift to the Muhammad when he is in the house of another wife that's mean this wife she will keep the gift she will speak to Muhammad to disapprove his request so everybody starts sending only because they knew that Muhammad is the one who favor Aisha so they send it only in the house of Aisha so Aisha she will approve the request by taking the gift so now Muhammad he is watching Aisha and Zainab insulting each other, screaming at each other until Aisha, she insulted enough. So if I respond, then I spoke back to her such a way in such a way until I silenced her. And then the Messenger of Allah said, huh, she is the daughter of Abu Bakr. <laughs> look, at, look at the evil man. Instead of saying, stop it, no need to fight. No, he is enjoying the Shah. And what is the request? They are all what they are asking for. Can we have equal treatment like Aisha? In different hadith, Muhammad is saying, No, you cannot. You cannot. She said, your wife have sent me to ask you. This is now the daughter of Muhammad Fatima. They sent even his daughter. They sent everybody. Ask him for justice. She said, your wife have sent me to ask you for justice regarding the daughter of Abu Quhafa. I.e. Aisha, she said. He said, daughter, do you love what I love? She said, uh, yeah. She said, then love this woman. He just told them he, this is his favorite dish. 
If Muhammad he love Aisha, then why he is marrying as many as he wish? Here we go. You have a love. And if you love a woman, that's an excuse. Do not to be justice with the other wives. So Muhammad in the in the public he says, Be justice with your wife. And then when he go to his house, Muhammad far away from any kind of justice. How that can be from God? How that can be ethical? So now if I'm a, if I'm a married Muslim man, uh, if I can call it marriage, because this is just a sex, sexual contract. It's not marriage. The woman in Islam, she is a sexually employed, not a wife. This is why it's so easy to divorce her. And then anytime the, the employer can fire you, you are fired, you are fired, you are fired. That's it. Gone. You are temporarily employed. Not like in the Bible, the man and the women, they will become one. Not like in the Bible where the Bible speak about love. We cannot find such a thing in the Quran. Where in the Quran it says the man, he should love his wife. Because there's no wife in the Quran. There's employment. If we go in the Bible, we will find something very beautiful, very amazing. About love and sacrifice. Ephesians 4 I therefore the prison of the Lord beseech you that ye walk worthy of the vocation wherewith ye are called with all lowliness and meekness with long suffering forbearing one another in love endeavoring to keep the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace there is one body and one spirit even as ye are called in one hope of your calling one Lord one faith one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in you all. But unto every one of us is given grace, according to the measure of the gift of Christ. Wherefore he saith, when he ascended upon high, he led captivity captive and gave gifts unto men. The Bible is full of verses speaking about how the man and how the women, how the Lord himself, Describe that the man should love his wife the same as the Lord the Christ he loved the church which means the Bible he made the women equal to the church the church with the Messiah gave his life for where is the love beat your wife have as many what about muta which is very disgusting where is the ethical in that? When Muhammad, he said, any man, any woman, they like to enjoy sexual activities. And here the Muslim, by the way, they say to you marriage. The, the hadith doesn't say anything about marriage. Here we go. This is the hadith in Arabic. I changed any Muslim to get me busted. It says, Ayyuma rajulin wa imra'a. توافقا فعشرة ما بينهما ثلاث ليال فإن أحبا أن يتزايدا أو يتتركا يتتركا Where is marriage? Any man and women they like to have sexual relationship they have to have to share a bed together there's no marriage so if any man and women and here they add things which is Unbelievable. Look, they put between two brackets to marry temporarily. Have you ever heard of any cult coming with such an ethical teaching? Is that really a marriage? How we can call this is a marriage? A prophet of God teaching his followers, his decent followers, you can, according to the translation, marry temporarily. For what? Just for sex. And this is godly teaching. And by the way, this is in the Quran, chapter 4, verse 24. Where the Quran says, you have to pay their wages for those who enjoy it. Enjoy what? Enjoy their private part. And here there's no, the word marriage does not appear, not even a second in the statement, as we see in the front of us in the translation. So three days, three nights, if you like. If you like, maybe less, you know, maybe, maybe one night, maybe one hour. And if they like to continue, then they can do so. And if they like to separate, they can do so. This is ethic. 
so God he created men and women so we can just have an agreement for uh, one night two night and this is supposedly not adultery and this is not a prostitution by the way she have to get paid otherwise this is not allowed the women she have to get paid which is officially prostitution there's a few conditions for this relationship number one the man he offered the women to sleep with him for a certain amount certain time and then if she agree with the certain amount and certain time then the contract is valid so the agreement is very simple the man he go let us say you are going in the elevator you see a woman you say how much you charge me to stay with me for two hours she say for two hours exactly uh, ten dollars if the man and the women agree in the terms and conditions then they are according to Islam lawfully can go to the bedroom and have sex and that is not against the teaching of Allah and when the two hours is gone there's no divorce there's no divorce in this kind of relationship because they are not married it's a, just a prostitution. So divorce is not exist when the two hours is over. The alarm, you can set your alarm. Use, you can use your Google, by the way, if you are in case practicing this. But Google say, okay, Google, set alarm after 60 minutes. So when the 60 minutes started, from the time the women and the men take off their clothes, go to the bed. After 60 minutes, you do not need to divorce her because she never was your wife. And if the man he died during this uh, sexual uh, relationship, the woman she cannot inherit anything because she is not his wife. Because there's nothing; it's just a prostitution. And yet they say to us that Islam came to solve problems, and Islam came to ethic, as we see in this article. You know, a lot of ethic. I can see it. To teach us to distinguish between moral and immoral, ethic. An ethic unethical good and evil <laughs> what a hilarious ethical we are talking about I'm not going to stay longer this video I think is enough to cover this topic and tomorrow we will I hope tomorrow will come back again with a new topic and as you see the number of viewers drop dramatically because we don't have a chat and this is what exactly I want. I don't want people who they are coming here for chat to be with us. Let them go. They are just troublemakers. They are not real. They are not serious. They are just here for fun, chit chat. I am not your coffee shop. And I am not here to entertain you. Go watch TV. Here we share education. And we try to help people with the understanding. So nobody can be deceived. Our purpose is bigger than uh, spending some time saying hi, hello to your friends. And actually, I like this idea not to have the chat on because it makes me able more to concentrate on my topic without disturbing. However, anytime there's a Muslim who would like to call us and debate us, please feel free. 99% of the time I go live on air, I have my Skype open and you can call me live on air. And I will be happy to have you. Or if you have a Muslim scholar, you can post a comment says he will call you in the day of etc. I will just do live broadcast just for this guy so he can call me. I will be happy to have him. Doesn't matter how big the scholar, how small he is. As long as he thinks he is a scholar, well, let us show him how scholarly he is. Because I never met any Muslim, he can really claim to be a scholar. Muslims are the last one to know what Islam is about. Especially more than 95% of them don't speak Arabic. Big articles, big words, but when you go and see the details, you will find that there's no ethic, no ethical, and everything they say in their article does not exist. Big word, justice, ethic, moral, morality, good, evil. When Islam teach exactly the opposite. And the funny here he says the book help to make Muslims with their ethical choice in their daily life Maybe I should make a video about this one because in Islam you don't have a choice 
Muslim they believe in predestiny where Allah he made you do things you like it or not and that what will make you go to hell or to heaven so every single sentence in this article is a fabrication it is not real and it is not ethical because is it ethical to lie to say to us Islam teach morality where is the morality here we go from all what we showed you where is the morality I will never accept that beating women is moral Actually, men who beat women, obviously, they need the doctor. Not only they have a moral problem, they have mental issues. Not only they have anger management, they have, they need mental management. Because when a man, he start beating somebody to obey, that's mean I am allowing people to dictate violently each other and then the strong he will take advantage of the weak and the big fish will eat the small fish and yet they call it ethic so because the woman she is weak physically I take advantage of his her weakness physically and then I beat her and actually the Quran make it even more horrible when he says because men they spend their money Because men they spend their money on women, this is why you can beat them. So the Quran making spending money in the wife not a duty, but it's a reasoning to be superior. It is not a duty because you love your wife to spend in your wife and your family. No. If you want to earn the right to beat your wife to be superior and that what make her wife anyway the second she became a wife she be, you became superior but how you earn the, the, this uh, superiority is that by being good is that by being loving is that be, by being responsible no because you spend it from your wealth on them this is a prostitution my friend a man he hire a prostitute because he's an evil man he beat her because he thinks she's down. She's no one. She accept money for sex. He humiliate her. He have no respect for her. And this is what Islam exactly teaching you. How this is can be from God. Thank you for watching. May the Lord bless you. Don't forget to download the video and share it with your friends. And for sure, if you like our channel, subscribe. And if you don't like, please and subscribe because I don't care. I am here to share the truth and the truth will set us free. This is the wisdom of my Lord, nothing of my own. Love your wife, my friend. And the man who uses violence against women, he is no man. He's a coward. He's a potato. He is literally mental. Violence can be used only to defend yourself from an evil act will harm your life. It shouldn't be used in any way against anyone. So how in the world you dare even to use it against a woman? She agreed to marry you, to share with you the same roof, the same food. How dare you to kiss her at night, you beat her in the morning. How dare you to show such an act in front of your children? How dare you to be fool like this and to follow such a book? God is wise. And God did not create the women to be beaten by the man, but to make a family. If we go in the book of Genesis, you will see how the books explain that go and multitude, multitude each other. We have a purpose of this marriage. We have a purpose of this union. The man, he will leave his family and they will be one, one, not two. They will be a chad. It's a unity, unity of, uh, of, 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 a, of a body, unity of a spirit, and unity of a target, and unity of life. In Islam, making the women just one more another piece of furniture we can break it anytime 
we can throw it out anytime she is there just to be used and abused and this is no way that this is can be from God thank you very much for being here may the Lord bless you and until we see you again Christ is Lord Islam is false and may the Lord show us the truth and again the truth was it us free take care